You know, the most beautiful thing in life, really the most beautiful thing is life, is that we are here now experiencing the moment. Each and every single moment is kind of an accumulation of a collective consciousness, a kind of personality that we feel in ourselves and we express in our work as artists or surgeons or pediatricians or whatever our uh, profession may be. I think that the beauty, the beauty in life is the fact that we can, we can learn, the fact that we can progress, the fact that we can move forward. Um, but what, what does it really mean to progress or to move forward? So I usually, so I usually don't really talk much about art competition. I don't really think that there's anything wrong, terribly wrong, with having an art competition or the idea of art competition. So long as you don't change your, the reason that you're creating your artwork, or for that matter, anything. If you're a runner, or if you're a uh, musician, or, or whatever your field may be, the, the whole act of competition is a very healthy one, where we strive to constantly, constantly improve our techniques, whether we're boxers and trying to, you know, learn how to maneuver better and to have the advantage over our opponents. Um, that's, that's all fine, but the reality is that the beauty in life, I think, comes from our own ability to learn and to progress. And that learning and that progression is done within ourselves. And I think that uh, the idea of self-competition is a really, really uh, healthy one, I think, in, in my opinion. A lot of times we really struggle as artists to figure out what we want to do with our work. And oftentimes we look to the old masters or even people painting today during your current time. Um, and sometimes it can be kind of a trap. Uh, we're thinking, oh man, I can't paint as well as Upari, or I can't paint as well as John Singer Sargent, or I can't paint as well as whatever. To me, I mean, you may think, oh man, how can I learn to paint like Upari? Upari's thinking, oh man, how can I, how can I learn to paint like Sargent? How can I learn to paint like Nelson Shanks? Sargent was probably thinking, man, how can I paint like Diego Velasquez? How can I, uh, how can I paint like Rembrandt? Rembrandt was thinking, oh man, how can I paint like Titian? How can I get those kind of, that kind of power? Nelson Shanks was probably thinking, man, how can I have the strength in my paintings that Rembrandt, Sargent, uh, Vermeer, and all of them had? I'm trying not to get paint on my hand. But anyway, the idea is that you can, you can end up in an endless loop of saying, I really want to paint like this person, I want to paint like that person, and then you, you trap yourself in the trappings of saying, oh, I want to paint better. Better is what? Relative to what? I mean, better can be, yes. I mean, you can have more form, structure, value, but these are all uh, means to an end. You can render something perfectly. You can present me with a cube in perspective, a cube that is right there, right in front of me, two point perspective, and I can draw the thing and it will look like the thing. I can color it in, you have a cube. Now I just did the job of a camera. A camera can do that much better than me. You know, perspective and color, but forget about, forget about that. The thing is that the most beautiful thing in life is that we can learn and that we can progress every single day. Every single day we get out of bed. Every single day we get to paint. Every single day we get into the studio. Every single day we get into the gym into the office or into the, the hospital where you're working as a surgeon or a nurse or whatever. Every single day that you can progress in your field in what you're doing is really a triumph. Every day that we can learn and see the world through more elaborate, a more elaborate point of view that we develop within ourselves. That is really uh, how we learn and to progress. So how about we put our own, how about let's put, let's put theory into practice. And we're gonna put theory into practice in terms of putting paint onto canvas. That being said, in today's video, uh, we're going to be preparing this canvas, this painting, this large painting for the grand finale. Finish is a relative term. Um, when, when I say finish, I mean to the point where I'm going to leave this canvas or set this canvas aside, let it 
let it dry, maybe think about it for a couple months. If I want to adjust something, I'll adjust it. But finish is a relative term. Finish to me means that I've said what I wanted to say on the canvas. Now, in today's video, we're gonna take the globe. Uh, we're gonna take the globe and we're gonna start to put in all of those little details that you see in the, um, that you've seen in the photo reference of the globe. And I think we're going to touch a few different areas. Um, I'm thinking the collar. I might want to put a little bit more information in the collar, but then again, we'll see as the day progresses. So on the palette here, we have titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and our medium is liquid original. So what we're going to do is get a little bit of the medium. So this is the liquid original. I'm just putting it onto a clean bristle brush. And we're going to oil out the area of the painting that we're going to work on. Now you're probably noticing these little things over here, uh, depending on the camera angle. Yeah, I think it's kind of noticeable. So this was from me painting in the, uh, the well, you'll, you'll see what I mean. It was from me painting in the background color all around here. So watch this. Now it disappears. So if you ever find that your paintings dry a little bit weird, uh, like this one did, it's okay. Um, it just means that you're going to have to oil out the areas that you're working on. Um, it'll all kind of even out in the uh, in the final varnish, where everything will have kind of a uniform gloss. Uh, but for the final varnish, you really want to wait for everything to be completely dry. Uh, that being said, so again, the beauty in life, I think, is the fact that we're able to learn and to grow. And um, really, I wanted to talk about that in this video as opposed to just kind of making a video of, okay, here's how I draw out the little map and here's how I fill in the little colors. I know you're not seeing what I'm talking about yet, but um, when we get to it, we're going to start to draw in the, uh, the map and certain areas of the map. And I also think it's kind of important to talk about the uh, the act of interpretation versus copying. Now there's going to be moments where you're going to want to copy. Uh, certainly the map, putting in the map might be kind of a time to, to copy, but even for that I don't really want to copy the map. As you'll see I'll draw the world basically. I'm going to draw the world as it appears to my eye and that's kind of the whole narrative I think of this story. He is an explorer. In ser he's searching. So our, our model is an explorer in this pose. Remember this is a narrative pose. He's an explorer. He doesn't have all the answers. If he did, life would be kind of boring. Life would be kind of boring if you had all the answers. You really want to leave room for creativity. Leave room for exploration. Um, so now that I have the entire surface covered, I'm going to get another brush in a little bit. So I'm going to want to get a little drawing brush for all the stuff within the globe. And again, I'm just using liquid original for this. And don't get this confused with varnish. I'm not varnishing this area of the painting. So now I've got another little brush. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of a drawing color. So I'm going to use ivory black, a lizard and permanent, maybe a touch of ultramarine blue, a little bit of flake white just to lighten the value. And now let's just use titanium. There we go. We kind of want a little bit of a dark, I want a dark kind of purple drawing color. But to be honest, the color doesn't matter that much yet. We're just going to use this kind of like an ink line to just draw in the, uh, the shapes for the map. And again, it's interpret, don't copy. And as always, uh, the, the mood shouldn't be so serious like, okay, now we do this, now we do that, then we do that. It's not. We leave room to flip the brush. We leave room to breathe and relax. So let's get to this little area. Here, so one of these days I'm gonna drop the brush. It's gonna be hilarious. But anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna get to this continent here, and this is the continent of Africa. So all around here, it's gonna be a little shape. Now I said interpret. 
I'm saying interpret, don't copy. If I really wanted to make this extremely accurate, oh no, I would not try to freehand draw it just like I didn't try to freehand draw that circle. Which by the way, I hope you like the little, <laughs> the little device that I came up with for the circle tool. Um, anyway, it's really not about, at least for me, it's really on a philosophical level, it's not about recreating nature. It's about uh, expressing the beauty and the elegance in nature. It's about painting, creating paintings that are reminiscent of the beauty in nature. It's not about copying nature. And if you want to copy it, I mean, no problem. Uh, it, it's all down to a matter of taste, what you want to do with your paintings. So again, using a little bit of the wobbly brush technique. So all the way down here, wobble wobble, all the way over here. And again, I'm not trying to keep the mood so serious. I think that, I think that, um, I don't know, we as painters were taken as like always having to be super serious. Especially us like realist painters, everyone's like, oh man, they must have a stern look on their face every time they walk into the studio and they're putting in all of those little like details or whatever. Um, and really, no, it's about having fun. It's, it's about having fun and learning and um, knowing what you're after. So here's Africa all the way down to here. And now you're really going to be disappointed in me because my knowledge of geography is not that great. I know that this is Africa and I know that Italy is somewhere over here, you know, the little boot, uh, the little boot of Italy, but which by the way, I really want to travel to Italy. I, you know, I want to travel everywhere. I want to travel, I want to paint, I want to travel and paint, travel and teach. That's what I really want to do. And I want to bring the experience of painting to, to everyone. I want to make the experience of painting accessible to anyone. That is what I want to do. Now then, uh, it's really hard for me to see with the photo reference. Again, you have the photo reference there to the top left corner of your screen and you'll see the discrepancies between uh, what I'm drawing and what is actually up there. Just like with the Sargent paint along that I did uh, yesterday and the day before, which I really hope that um, some of you, or I hope that all of you will enjoy the paint along exercise and will do the paint along exercise because I really want to do more of those types of videos. I think it's fun to, to include everyone in the process. But now you see why I rendered out all the stuff here uh, and let all of the stuff for the globe dry before trying to draw in all of these continents. Because, okay, so the brush that I used to oil out, I can also use to erase. See this? easily can just move certain shapes around and it's not a problem. So again, every day that we can learn, every day that we can grow, every day that we can progress is a good day, is a wonderful day. And that can be every single day of your life. Every single day of your life can be a, a great day, it can be an excellent day. It's all a matter of perspective. I try to look at every kind of negative thing that happens to me in life and try to see the positive out of it. I really do. Our, our lives, the time span of our lives is a cosmic blink of the eye. We're only here for a tiny blink of the eye, a cosmic blink of the eye. And we really want to enjoy the time that we have here. Enjoy it. Now this shape comes all the way down here. Now then, here's where I'm really going to look kind of silly because um, I, I know that this is the, uh, ooh, I, I wanna say that this is Russia up here. Now, I, now I'm definitely gonna sound like a complete fool because I definitely don't know all of my geography. Um, yeah, my, my major in college was math, so I, I didn't really, get too much geography. Oh dear. 
But it's okay, I'm really trying to present you with the truth. I'm not going to just like pause the video and Google things and pretend to know things that I don't know. So this goes all the way over here. Now this is South Africa, right? And this is, I guess, north up here. So I think I got the basic basic shapes all drawn out. So I think the next thing to do, oh, nope, I'm missing. This looks like a compass up here. This isn't really part of the globe. I don't know if I'll put that in. If I don't like it, I can take it out later. So I guess that's the compass. Hmm. Oh, and I'm missing another big thing which is the divider. I guess the, that's the equator line. And uh, here's where it's going to be kind of important to get the equator in the right area because if I, get, if I put the equator here, I know I can just ramble on and on about interpret, but if I don't put the equator where it needs to be, somewhere over here, I'm going to be in some big trouble, some like cosmic trouble. So let's, let's go ahead. It's definitely brave brush. We're definitely brave brushing this. We want to get this right. The whole world depends on this brush stroke. There we go. And again, don't be so serious. Learn to smile. Learn to enjoy every single day. Every single day we can paint is a day we can have fun and learn really is a gift. The gift that I want to share with the world. And it all starts with you. You sitting there watching, you are the most important thing. The most important thing. You're the most important person to the development of my video series that I want to create for the world. You sitting right there. Now then, um, I think that that's where I want the equator to go. Now, is it a perfect curve? Uh, probably not, so when in doubt, blur it out. So I think that this area uh, isn't quite working. So I'm gonna just kind of try to adjust that. Turn this brush all the way around, okay. So again, it's kind of a perfectly imperfect curve that we painted here, but it's okay. As long as the equator is in somewhat of the right position, I think we're good to go. So now let's see, uh, how about we mix up kind of like a dark green for this? Maybe a pink for this? A green, a pink, and a red, and a blue. So there's a green, pink, red, blue, seeing a little bit of orange, so green, pink, red, blue. So let's return to the palette and mix those colors up. Green, pink, red, blue. Green, pink, red, blue. Green, pink, red, blue. I'm just trying to remember all of those colors. Gonna need some more brushes. I'm looking for some brushes out in the corner here. Okay, green, pink, red, blue. Green, pink, red, blue. Okay, this is me trying to remember the colors. Green, pink, red, blue. How about green brush will be the green? So green. So I'm gonna use very simple here. Uh, sap green, ultramarine blue. And of course our medium, just to increase the fluidity of it. So that's our green. Let's just throw in a little bit of yellow ochre. Just a little bit of yellow ochre there. Green pink, red, blue, green, pink, red, blue. I think I might have forgot the orange, but that's oh, whatever. So green, pink, red, blue. So what about this? What's this gonna be? Red. So green, pink, red, blue. This is gonna be our red. And it's not gonna be quite a uh, straight up red. We're gonna kind of put a little bit of a lizard permanent into it. Just a little bit of a lizard permanent and some 
Ultramarine blue. Yep, there we go. Uh, something interesting happens when you mix the cadmium red medium with the ultramarine blue. They kind of neutral out with one another and create kind of like a nice uh, dark, not so chromatic red. So green, pink, red, blue, green, pink, red, blue. So that's the red. How about blue? Hmm. This has blue tape. Let's let this be blue. So our blue is actually kind of a, uh, hmm. It's kind of, it actually looks like ultramarine blue and titanium white and just that. Let's not complicate life. Let's just make this very simple mixture of ultramarine blue, titanium white, and ivory black, just to bring down the saturation of the blue, just so it's not terribly saturated. And just a little more of the ultramarine blue and ivory black, just to darken the value a little bit. Should be fine. Green, pink, red, blue, green, pink, red, blue. Green, pink, red, blue. What's left is the pink. And we'll get to the orange later. So, uh, whoops, what just happened there? This brush got contaminated. It's okay, I'm just cleaning it off with the paper towel. All right, let's get the pink. So we're gonna use a little bit of alizarin permanent cadmium red, cadmium red, I'm all over the place. Alizarin permanent and titanium white. Gives us a nice kind of deep pink. This all depends on your computer screen as well, or TV screen, or however you're watching. Somehow I just automatically went to the yellow ochre. Sometimes that happens. You just go right for a color without thinking about it. So cadmium red medium now. Now that's, a, that's our pink. Green, pink, red, blue. And let's get our orange, might as well. Let's get our orange, just getting another brush. Hopefully the autofocus works, okay. So green, pink, red, blue, let's get the orange out, might as well. So orange for us, very simply, is just going to be yellow ochre, cadmium, red, medium. Super simple. All right, and that's our orange. Now we have all the colors that we need, well, most of them, to start to paint in the details for the globe. So the orange is gonna go right over here. Now I realize each shape is an individual country, of course, so yeah, that's gonna be kind of a, uh, kind of a strain on me trying to respect the country of which I'm painting. And by respect, I mean, I know I'm not going to get all of these shapes correct, so just bear with me. Uh, the fact is I'm really trying to interpret visual information and not copy it. So if I really, really, really wanted to make this look like the map, I would trace it out and color it in. I wouldn't even think about painting this way if I were to create a super accurate rendition of the, uh, of the world. So there's a little reddish shape over here. So it's probably the most nervous I've ever been actually painting uh, because I, I know that I, I know that there are individual countries here that I'm painting, which terrifies me. So now the blue switch to the pink. So again, all of those of you that are watching, give me some words of encouragement. Come on, tell me, tell, tell Yupari it's okay to um, not paint it exactly the way it is. You know what, there needs to be a little bit of purple there. All right, so here we're gonna mix the purple. So we're gonna use Lizard Permanent, Ultramarine Blue, Lizard Permanent, Ultramarine Blue. And yes, if I seem a little bit nervous, it's because I kind of am, I don't, really want to disrespect any individual country by not getting the shape correct. 
because I know I won't get them correct trying to freehand them, so. Um, and I think there's a lot of growing and a lot of pro progression, a lot of self-progress that happens when you overcome a fear. Uh, to share a little story with you, I used to actually be terrified, terrified of spiders. And then uh, recently I've just been kind of trying to break away from that fear. And I can now comfortably say that I can have a spider crawl on my hand or something and it doesn't bother me anymore. And I feel great about being able to overcome that fear. Once, The more fear that we overcome, the more fears that we overcome, I think the more we grow as well. Spiders aren't out there to just attack us. They're really not. They're, most of the time, they're just trying to run from us. It's important to understand. Okay, so here is the purple. Maybe it's too bright purple, so ivory black. And we're just gonna use that to bring down the saturation a tiny bit. So ivory black and the titanium white. So that is now our purple. Now that we have our purple, this purple is going to go all down here. There we go. A little bit of a purple over here. And you actually only need about three colors to... Um, you only need about three colors to color any map. And that was a, uh, that's a mathematical thing. The four color theorem, four color theorem states that any map or any set of shapes, now I'm not gonna word it properly, but I'm gonna try. Uh, basically any map with these individual shapes can be colored with four colors. Maybe there's something about the number four with colors, interesting. The Zorn palette only has uh, four colors, so. Hmm, maybe there's a little connection there. So let's switch to the, oh goodness, which one is orange? Okay, I think this one is orange. So switching to the orange. Now I don't think I'm gonna show you all of me painting this globe. Uh, just on a practical level, I think that uh, the footage might just get a little too long with me trying to show you every single thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to show you what I can, and I may end up cutting certain segments out uh, just for the sake of time of this video. So it's okay if the green gets into the red a little bit. It's gonna be okay. So let's see, let's see, let's see. A little bit more blue over here. There we go. Getting that shape. And then the red, red's gonna go over here. I realize now that the values are gonna change on each one of these uh, areas on the map. So this red may be the same red as this red, but it's going to get darker. So this red here is actually going to get a little bit darker than this red there. And the, the way that I just made this red darker is just by putting a little bit of alizarin permanent onto it, and that's it. That's all. So this little shape goes right over there. And uh, it's gonna meet with the green. So let's see, where's our green? Where's my green? Green's over here. So again, this green is going to get darker than that green. So actually what I've decided for the values is I'm going to apply more pressure. See this more pressure in the areas that I want to get darker and the areas that I want to get lighter of the same color, such as, such as, such as, mm, this one, less pressure, less pressure here, more pressure there that creates the value change that we want. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of the blue. So again, less pressure, very little pressure. 
And now let's look for another value. So the next value is gonna be purple. Now that doesn't really work. I may actually have to put in some more ultramarine blue onto that purple, because this purple has to get darker than this one. Now this is one of the best indications of plain, I think, ever next to the books, because now you're literally looking at different planes of color on the globe. So let's get to the red. It's gonna be red and blue, and I know there's gonna be some shapes in here that I'm just going to miss. So again, I, I completely apologize for that. And then there's gonna be, I think, I think, I think, I think, another red all into here. So now that we've covered all of the uh, the shapes that we could for the globe, uh, the next thing to do is going to be to, um, I think what I'm gonna wanna do is examine the, uh, the collar, the collar that he's wearing and maybe just a few little touches into the collar. But then after that, uh, what's gonna be left is to just re-examine the big picture once again and to make sure that the overall light effect um, being portrayed in this painting is the light effect that uh, I'm observing from life. And to finish this off, uh, we're definitely going to want to work from life, which is what, what we're gonna have tomorrow. So in tomorrow's video, we're gonna travel off to the uh, Howard County Portrait Group, the portrait group that I run every Tuesday morning. And it's also the school where I teach my uh, portrait classes. So I, I teach eight week portrait classes. And all of that information is going to be in that uh, the website for the school. But anyway, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just figure out how much information I want to uh, describe in this uh, in the collar and in the the meeting of the beard and the shirt. I think that the the beard, the transition from the beard to the shirt or the vest is is pretty good. I think the last thing I'm going to want to do uh, for this area is just to describe a little bit more of an intricate little dark shape there than I have uh, for the, the color and maybe just a little light brush stroke there, um, but nothing major. I don't really wanna paint too many of the buttons and stuff like that because I just feel like that would just be a little bit too distracting. So let's get to the palette. And with the drawing brush that we started out initially, let's go ahead and mix up something very dark. So we're gonna use ivory black, lizard and permanent, Ivory black laser and permanent, ultramarine blue for that. And then for the uh, for the light of the collar, this is actually the brush that I used for the blues. So I'm gonna get the titanium white. I didn't really use too much of the flake white, but uh, let's use a little bit the flake white. Remember flake white has this property that allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, thus allowing you to add much more of uh, thicker paint to your painting. So um, 
yeah, just a little more of the flake white, just to have a little more com consistency for this color. We want something that's a light blue, but maybe not too much of an obvious blue. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of purple. So we're gonna take a little bit of the purple from that area of the palette and see how we're making just a little more of an intricate uh, color. So a lot of colors you can obtain with a fairly limited palette like the one we've been using. And if you live in the Maryland area and you want to know more about that portrait class uh, that I'll be teaching, I teach it almost every semester. It's an eight-week portrait class. I shouldn't say almost every. I mean, I started um, a couple semesters ago. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to leave a link to the school in the description box down below. And you can also check out the portrait session, the open portrait session, uh, the Tuesday morning portrait session that I run every Tuesday morning. So I think this is pretty good for the light of the collar, maybe, maybe, just maybe. I'm gonna to switch to the other brush. This is the green. And notice how I'm using brushes that are kind of similar in the value family. So just maybe a little bit of titanium white into this color. And I, I want something that's dark or kind of like a half tone and then something that's really light. A little bit more titanium white. But then again, this is still kind of a generic color. So pink, a little bit of pink just to kind of add a little bit more flavor to this color. By flavor, I mean just a little more nuance to this color mixture. There we go. So I'll tell you what, I'll show you where I want to use this color first. And we're just gonna wanna push the light onto this corner. And with this lighter color, we're also pushing that edge a little bit sharper and just letting the little single little brush stroke show just like that. Um, and I think from a distance that that reads just fine, but uh, just to be sure that it's not too, I don't know, too distracting, I'm going to soften this little area here and I'm just using a little piece of paper towel just to make sure that that edge isn't too distracting. But I think it's it's okay. So next thing I'm going to do with this same color, I'm going to add a little bit, just a little bit of a touch of light into here. Just kind of sprinkling on a little glance, almost impossible to see. But I'm just doing this to kind of, I don't know, just to kind of merge this color with that color. And I'm using a little bit of broken color there to do it. Meaning I'm letting the color underneath show to help to soften that edge. And it's important to always stand back. So whenever making a major uh, value change like that, it's important to stand back and to see how that influences the overall light effect throughout the entire picture. Remember, we want that light to go right through the canvas and emerge and show kind of like that, um, the experience that we feel when we are observing the model from life. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just darken that gray that I had a little bit. So I think that could actually get a little darker. And now we're going to apply that area to this portion where the collar is showing. So we're gonna to have to be a little bit brave here. Brave brush it. With a single brush stroke, uh, we can show a little glance of what the, um, the shirt, or at least the light from the shirt showing there. And we're actually pushing it a little bit more blue than we, we see it in the photo reference because the photo reference is flattening out the colors a little bit. And I know that uh, just from working from life for this one, that there would be a little bit of a different tone of color. So the bluish. So again, I'm just using the paper towel, kind of finger painting a little bit here just to get the, um, I don't know, just to get that edge to be a little bit softer. So the next thing we're going to want to do is to get that dark brush. I'm gonna just add a little bit more ivory black and the liquid original to it. 
and we're going to further describe this dark shape for the collar. So this goes all down here and flattens out like that, goes into here. And then of course we have the dark shape coming into here, all down here. And then that's gonna go all into here, but I don't wanna to describe too much below this point. I think that all of the information that we want to illuminate is going to come into effect into this area here. So just a single little brush stroke for that. And for the button, here's, here's what I'm gonna do for the button. Uh, I'm gonna show one button in the light. And if I feel like it later, I might put the rest of them uh, further down, but I don't, want, I don't think I want to at this point. So just one brush stroke of dark, a little brush stroke of light. And now we have the effect from a distance of a little bit of a button. So just a little more of an edge here for the collar. Don't really need much for this. We really want to get the illusion of a lot of detail without too much work. Softening right there. We're gonna add a little bit more of a specific shape into this fold of the fabric it goes into here it gets darker right over here and so with that i think that's about all i'm going to want to do for today so in today's video it was really about uh, getting the globe uh, getting all of the smaller shapes for the globe uh, which I think we got, and I also wanted to talk a little bit about what I perceive to be the, the most beautiful thing in life for us, which is uh, to learn and to be able to move forward. And like, like I said in the beginning of this video, I really think that the most beautiful thing in life is that we can experience it at all. The fact that we can uh, learn from each and every day. Remember, each little uh, bit of memory that we acquire in our mind is kind of creating a collective consciousness within us. And that kind of beauty and elegance of observing the natural world is what we can portray in our canvases. And it doesn't matter if it's a realist painting, uh, abstract painting or whatever. It's the fact that we are painting at all. It's the fact that we can experience anything at all. I think that is the most, uh, one of the most beautiful things uh, ever in the world, at least, you know, in my opinion. Uh, but that being said, I think that's about all that I'm going to want to do for today. Tomorrow, um, I think that tomorrow is going to be the grand finale of this painting. Not entirely sure though, because we are moving at the speed of art. So that being said, uh, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to want to re-evaluate the large picture, the overall large color and value relationships. That being said, on a practical level, I think I'm just going to re-examine the background color here and the background color here, and of course eliminate that outline. I wanted that outline of the circle to dry completely before covering it over just so I know that I haven't lost that circle that we used the circle tool to um, construct. That being said, I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, I'm trying to bring the experience of painting to you. I wish you the best and I'll be back again very soon. And here is an image of what the painting looks like after today with the camera as close to front and center as I can possibly get it. Now also bear in mind, like I, like I usually say, there's still a little bit of camera distortion that you can see on the corner, but I mean, this is the closest I can get to front and center with it. That being said, you can really see at a distance that that's now starting to kind of look like a globe. And as you saw me painting it before, I didn't, I didn't really copy what I was looking at. I, I think that it's important to stay true to oneself. And I know I could have easily just copied that uh, by tracing it or something off of the uh, picture and then coloring it in. But I just, I didn't feel right doing that because I didn't do that with the rest of the painting. Uh, so that being said, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll be back again very soon.